Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone to um, the first conference call. Welcome to Peace Corps uh, Malawi. Uh, my name is Najma Bawa, and I'm your country desk officer. So I'm going to be working with you for the next couple of months, um, just kind of making sure that you uh, stay on stay on top of all your tasks. And um, then eventually we will all meet in uh, Philadelphia for staging, but I'll talk more about that later on. Um, I have a PowerPoint to kind of basically guide us through um, just some stuff that I want to share with you, you all, and then I will take questions um, later on in, in the later part of this uh, call. Sounds good? Sounds good. Cool. All right. So, um, in true PowerPoint fashion, oh, for, can you just mute just for the like next 10 mi minutes that we don't get all of the background noise? That would be perfect. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, in true PowerPoint fashion, I um, pulled together some beautiful pictures from um, from Malawi. Um, it is a absolutely beautiful country. I actually was there uh, back in 2016, and it just it's one of my favorite places in the world. So, you guys are in for a treat, and I'm super jealous that you all are getting getting the chance to serve in Malawi. Um, so, I don't know if most of you've already done your own homework, but you know it's landlocked. the The capital city is Lilongwe. Um, the population is like 16 million or so. And the name of the currency is called Quachua, and you can read about this in various, uh, you know, Google or, you know, various books. Um, if you didn't know by now, it is known as the warm heart of Africa. And um, when you get to in country, they'll tell you um, they have many reasons why they're called the warm heart, heart of Africa. But for me, it's just the people are super welcoming. They are super sweet. And um, just I felt like I was at home the first day I even got in country. So it's it's really special. Um, you know, in the north, it's really um, green and, and lush. Um, in the south, it's a little bit more dry. So depending on where your site is, um, your friend might be living in a very dry site, but you may be living in, in a very, you know, green um kind of setting so it all depends on where you're placed um in the country and what your site may look like okay um so um yeah so malawi uh was first uh, opened in 1963 um they did leave in 1976 um for a little bit and then they resumed in 1978 um right in total there's like 2800 volunteers that have served in malawi and right now we have 122 in the country Okay. Um, let me know if I'm going too fast, um, but I want to have leave enough time for questions. Um, so the sectors in Malawi. So you all are a one group that will, uh, and they only receive one group in the year. Um, so we have combined sectors, which is health, environment, and education. And I heard you all in the beginning of the call kind of shouting out, I'm education and I'm environment. Um, so yeah, these are the three sectors that we have in the country. Um, and so if you're a health worker, you're known as like a health extension volunteer or, or a health specialist um, for environment, you know, natural resource, or you may be doing more work in like as a forestry volunteer. And then education, you're going to be teaching English. All right. So here's some like just brief information about the health program. Um, you they do focus on HIV, um, HIV and AIDS, um, internal child health, nutrition. Um, but it's going to vary, obviously, when you get to your site and you're going to assess the need of your community and then you'll work accordingly. Um, and you all have um, pre-service training for about three months um, that will give you some really great technical uh, resources and tools um, so that you can do your job effectively. So environment, again, you all will be probably working tree planting, forest management, gardening. Um, you probably will set up your own garden and, and use that as a um, as a, an example for your community members to try new um, planting planting techniques or uh, introduce new uh, fruits or vegetables to that particular community. Okay. Um, education, you will be teaching English. Um, uh, your class size will probably vary. I was an education volunteer in Kenya. Um, I had 100 students um, uh, in, my, uh, ninth, in my ninth grade class, and that was pretty hectic. But I got some really good um, class management uh, uh, tricks during PST that taught me how to you know, deal with the class that, that big. So um, I know that might seem scary at first, but trust me, they definitely give, do a great job with um, really preparing you 
you uh, before you um, hit the classroom. All right, um, and then again, you'll be teaching English and literacy. All right, so a little snippet of like or overview of your housing and living conditions. Um, so every site obviously is different, but for the most part, like, and, and you'll see it here, don't expect running water or electricity. Um, you know, the poverty level in Malawi is, is really low. And um, so as you know, you'll be living with your community ab about at the same um, economic state of which your community members are living in. So um, although you will, you'll have your own house, uh, there may not be running water or electricity. However, there will be perhaps a well um, or a water source close enough to to you um, so that uh, you have access to water. Electricity, um, uh, it may not be at your house, but um, perhaps if you're an education volunteer, your school will have electricity, so that may be a way to um, charge up your laptop or other um, the devices you have. If you're an um, environment, um, uh, environment um, Sorry, volunteer. You know, you may have like a um, a counterpart that has electricity at their house or at their uh, station. Um, and a lot of volunteers definitely use solar panels and things of that nature to charge up their devices. Um, one second. I do see someone's. Are they having problems with seeing the PowerPoint? I think so. The message have someone. Okay, let's just keep on moving. I'm, I'm recording, so I will send this out to those who are having technical difficulties. Um, so you may not have a, t a toilet in your um, house, but you'll have an outside latrine um, that will be not too w within your compound. Um, um, and because you don't have running water, there's no shower, so you will you will be taking bucket baths. Okay. All right. So next steps. The first one is to be patient. Um, I know all of you right now have at least submitted on your legal um, kits, so thank you so much for doing that in a timely manner. Um, I don't know if it was already communicated, but um, we have to send your names uh, about 30 days in advance to um, Malawi um, in order to get start working on your um, working your work permit and your vi and your uh, visas. And so, if you're not legal, legally clear 30 days prior to staging, uh, you unfortunately cannot depart in June uh, with your class so it is it was very, very crucial and essential for you to all get your legal kit in time to allow for us to process it at Peace Corps and then also then send it to OPM for them to uh, it, uh, conduct the background investigation um, so thank you so much for doing that that's where you could have been very proactive and um, and, and, get, and get it in um, early uh, so I know some of you are still waiting on legal clearance. Um, it's been sent to OPM, and they're, you know, working at, at clearing everyone. But just be patient um, if you haven't heard from the legal team in a, in a while. Um, medical, the same thing. If you thank you for submitting all of your tasks. If there's some, um, you know, outstanding tasks that you you need to complete, please try and do that as soon as possible. Um, so and and then please stay in communication with your nurse if um, they do issue a task to you please if like you're having difficulty getting an appointment and if it's going to be like you know two to three weeks before you can actually get it done shoot your nurse a, a, an email and let them know that you're at least working on it versus them not hearing from you and they may assume that you're not interested okay so just you know send them FYI you know it's that's taking me longer than expected to get my task my task completed so just so that they know. Um, passports and visas. So as you all know, there is no visa for Malawi that you need, you need to um, be worried about. But you did have to submit your uh, uh, no fees application. I hope that all of you have done that. If not, I am following up with them and they would notify me if you haven't or so. So um, those are the three main items that you need to, you need to um, have been working on. Um, and if you've already submitted everything and you think you're all set to go, you probably are, and you just have to just be patient before you start seeing the clearances come through. Okay. Um, all right. So thank you. I did not want to talk too much. Um, I just wanted to give you a really overview of um, 
you know, of Malawi and the different sectors. So one thing I will talk about before I open it up to questions is so staging. So you all will be departing on June second, June second, and it's going to be in Philadelphia. Um, so you'll you'll come to Philadelphia for a day. We'll have sessions. Um, then you'll be t departing the next day for Malawi. Um, you'll receive all of that staging, all the staging instructions about 30 days prior to um, prior to your departure, um, and it'll include information on how to book with Sato on how to get to Philadelphia, um, and um, if you do have to come in a day earlier, they'll book the hotel reservations and things of that nature. Um, but I'll give you some more guidance as we get closer to um, to that. Um, in the meantime, um, we will. I am going to be working with uh, staff in country, and we're going to kind of uh, have a series of uh, conference calls with you, so that you get an opportunity to talk to your program manager, your supervisor, um, and, and so that they can give you some more in-depth information as to what it's going to be like to what it's going to be like to serve as an education volunteer or an envir environment um, volunteer or um, what else? Environment, health. <laughs> um, so that's going to be a really cool call to have. And then we'll also probably invite a volunteer on the call as well from each sector who will then um, talk about a day in a life and basically giving an idea of what it's like to serve there. Um, if you haven't done so already, um, you know, I've I've sent out a number of links uh, for you to uh, look at, but then also go on to Peace Corps Malawi's uh, Facebook page. They uh, do a tremendous job uh, keeping uh, everyone, their audience, informed of the great work that the volunteers are doing. So there's videos and there's pictures and they they celebrate every uh, holiday there is out there and they always do something surrounded, about, um, surrounded around that theme. So uh, definitely I'm sure with international women's day tomorrow um, I'm sure they're going to be um, posting some videos about that some, some with some cool um, uh, projects that the volunteers are doing so look out for that um, so yeah I'm going to stop talking at this point and open it up for questions and uh, yeah so feel free to unmute yourself um, if you're not ask you can ask a question or we can why don't we do this? Why don't you type your question actually in the conversation box? That way we don't have multiple people, uh, you know, trying to talk at the same time. Okay? Does that sound good? Yes, I'm putting that up right now. That is correct. You are, um, yeah, you're departing the 4th, and uh, staging will be on the 4th. Uh, you depart the 5th, and you'll arrive in country on the 6th. Uh, Arnold, you're asking about a U.S. bank access within country. So, yeah, some volunteers do um, uh, carry their, um, their bank cards with them. Uh, one thing to note is that you would want to ensure that you communicate with them that you're going to be using it in Malawi. That way they don't block your card from the first time you're trying to get money from it. Um, but there are some, there are banks avail um, in country that you can pull, like use your card um, there. Yeah. Uh, and Jeff is asking about passports. Yeah, so if you submitted your personal passport um, with your no fees application, you will be receiving that um, at staging. Okay. And, and in addition to your no fees passport, you'll get that um, at staging. And then Natalie is asking, where is staging? Staging is in um, Philadelphia. And you'll get more information about that about 30 days prior to uh, staging. Okay. Uh, Caitlin's asking, are we paying for the cost of our flight to Philadelphia? No. So um, in, the, in the instructions, it will let you know, it will tell you to call our travel um, agency, uh, Sado, and uh, you'll book through them. And uh, so you, it's not at your own expense. However, if you do decide to drive to staging, um, then I, um, I would please uh, actually print out uh, a map with the mileage and you will be reimbursed up to the cost um, up to the cost that we would have paid for you to come to staging. So 
that's something you would want to bring with you. And I'll have all those details um, in the email that uh, gets sent out. Okay. Uh, Ellen is asking, give me one second. Can you make sure that you mute your, your mic, please? Okay, so um, I'm sorry, I was just trying to read Ellen's um, question. So in regards to receiving funds for secondary projects in country, that is something that you would um, apply. You, one, you'll get more information about that when you get in country. They'll talk about extensively about grants and how to apply for them. Um, but they, you cannot set, set up a a separate fund outside of what is issued from Peace Corps. So um, like anything like a GoFundMe or anything of that nature, you can't have um, actually um, up while, while as a volunteer, but there are mechanisms in which you can receive funding in order to do secondary projects. We have something called as uh, the PCPP, um, and they'll talk about that when you get in country and how you can apply for those funds to do secondary projects. So I don't want to go too much into uh, into that right now, but you will you will get information about that. And the cool thing is once you get once you set that up, you can then share that link with your, you know, with your Rotary Club, um, Ellen, and then they can um, send, uh, they can actually donate um, through Peace Corps into that particular um, um, fund for your project. Okay, so there's there's official ways in which we go about, um, uh, you know, getting grants and and creating fund pages. Okay. Um, Benjamin was asking about when do you find out what part of the country you will be living in? Great question. Um, so uh, you won't find out until you're actually in country. Uh, we'll have a number of questionnaires um, that we'll send to you um, prior to um, you departing. Uh, staff in country do look at your aspiration statement and they do look at your resume to try and help them decide on where you will be placed. But you also will um, have it perhaps an interview in country with your program staff and then they'll make the deter determination somewhere like you know in the beginning of uh, pre-service training but um, you won't find that out prior to leaving though okay uh, Helena she's asking about legal kits um, so if you submitted it around December 1st should you be expecting an email from legal cl clearance confirmation how do we know if you submitted it in time? Um, you should have received, once you submitted your legal kit, you should have received an email com confirming that they received it. Um, so I would definitely go back and check if you got that email. Sometimes they go into the spam folder, so I would um, want to you know, double check that area. Um, but now, it, with you submitting in December 1st, um, it, it, these legal kits, legal clearances really do happen um, arbitrarily in a way like it, we have no kind of frame in which where if you send, submit it in December then we can say oh sometime maybe early January or early February we will get it back it really depends sometimes the clearances take only two weeks and sometimes they take two to three months um, there it doesn't mean that you have actually anything on your um, uh, on your record um, it's just the way in which OPM operates it's it, it just takes some time and some are shorter than others but um yeah just be patient I, that's why i said that was like the number one next task for you because i know you all have you know submitted your you've done your part to submit your legal kit on time so just be patient um but in terms of confirming whether if we have it um you should have received a confirmation email from the legal team if you have not send an email to admin placement at, le at peacecore.gov and they will um they can verify for um, for you Okay. Um, Michelle is asking, I close everything out and try to reinstall. Oh, sorry. That's in regards to, uh, technical stuff. Oh, okay. So, um, Michelle's just noted that her legal clearance took about three months. Okay. So it, it, it will take some time. Um, Michael noticed saying he was saying something about based on his research um, that 
that he's done, Huntington will reimburse ATM fees for banks not, associ no, not associated with their bank. That's good to know. Um, good to know. Thank you. Um, so Audrey and Cameron are, they're asking, uh, but what's the best way to learn Chichagua? Great question. So your post, uh, staff, st staff members at your post have created a um, podcast actually for you all. And um, I'm going to be sending that out. We we're putting things into learning space, which is, which, uh, which is a platform that you'll have access to in the next month or so. And so that will have um, these podcasts there so that you can start learning Chichewa. <clears throat> so just hang tight with that. Um, so that answers those two questions. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So about packing, yeah, you'll definitely receive more information about what to bring. And I think you all are already part of a Facebook group, if I'm not if um, I'm not mistaken, no, no, okay, all right. If not, um, I w will set one on probably. Um, th there, most often not. It's but probably it's best that you probably reach out to volunteers as well. We do have a packing list that we'll send out to you, and we'll also have a conference call with c currently serving volunteers who will talk about like you know what they you know wish they didn't bring and what things that they really are happy that they brought. So um, that will definitely come down the pipeline. But um, you can definitely engage with current current volunteers and ask them you know questions on um, via Facebook. That is something is a it's a practice that um, most invitees do. Um, but we'll definitely have a conference call talking about packing item um, packing lists. There is one currently on the website. Um, if you go in, if you go into preparing um, to volunteer, there is a list there that's pretty up to date. But um, if you want some clarification or anything like that, we'll definitely have a conference call um, covering that. Um, so about creating a Facebook group, that I, that is something that I can't officially do for you all. If one of you all want to start that up, that is totally fine. Um, I can't share email addresses either. So if you want to do, if you want to start it up and have like a generic name of like, you know, Peace Corps, Malawi, uh, departing June uh, 2018, uh, that's typically what um, people do. And then they're able to join in on that Facebook. Ah, see, Alex said there is an already, there is one already. Okay, I thought so. Um, all right. Um, are there any updates about malaria vaccine implementation in Malawi for 2018? I haven't been able to find any articles past last summer. Would health volunteers somehow be involved in vaccine implementation? Okay, uh, Ellen. Yeah, good question. So you will not be in involved in actually administ administering any vaccines or anything of that nature. But in terms of um, information about um, the current vaccine vaccinations that are going on, you will you will learn that at, during PST. Um, and that's and once you save that question for when we have a conference call with um, our program with the programming team, they will be able to answer that. But you will not. Yeah, you won't be part of actually ever administering a vaccine to anyone in your community. Yeah, Helena. Yeah, you can go ahead if you want to start looking at that packing list in uh, on the website. Go ahead. Like that was updated not too long ago, so they're probably going to still pull from that list, anyways. But it'll be good to hear from current volunteers um, to see what like really worked for them and what didn't. Okay. Um, yeah. So Alex is asking about the insurance company uh, Clemens. Um, how do you, how and where do you get this? So that is um, information that is going to be on your onboarding portal, which is going, you will have access to about 45 days out from staging. I do suggest that you um, look into actually getting ins insurance on anything that you do bring um, uh, that is expensive. Um, so you'll get more information about that on, on your onboarding, in your onboarding portal. Okay. So it seems as though Alyssa is the, um, I guess the lead, not the leader, but administrator for your Facebook group. So, 
Um, Jenna, good question about your loan uh, deferral. Yep. So um, you also will gain, uh, have get more information in your portal um, about loan deferment. There is there is a form in there that you can download and print off um, so that you can uh, submit to your loan pr provider stating that you will be serving a, as a Peace Corps volunteer for the next two years. Um, but definitely, you all want to definitely check in with your, um, your loan provider and see what is necessary necessary in order to do that and what your options are okay thank you Alex yes you have to contact your loan provider because each, each one is different and requires different things okay oh Caitlin sorry about that yeah you asked a question about um, recommendations for phone plans I think I was Bond, I think you sent an email about that. Um, so with phone plans, that's something that you're going to take care of when you get in country. Um, and so you don't have to worry about that right now. And one thing I I can say about phones is that if you are going to bring your iPhone or your Andro Android, you definitely want to make sure that it's unlocked prior to um, departing. Because get, getting that unlocked in country, it's, it, it will be a little bit difficult or impossible. So definitely um, want to unlock your phone um, with AT&T or whoever your, you know, your service provider is. Uh, ensure that your phone is unlocked prior to coming. Uh, that way you can connect to Wi-Fi, you know, uh, You'll be able to, I guess, to connect with Wi-Fi anyways, but that way you can actually use the phone plan that's in country in your phone if you want to. Um, Alyssa is asking, how many people are in your cohort? Uh, so you're supposed to be about 60 going over to Malawi. Yep. Right now you're more than that, but uh, due to you know certain things that pop up for people. Arnold, can you mute your phone, please? Thank you. Um, you know, things come up for different people or some people don't get medically cleared or legally cleared. So um, you're a little bit more than 60 right now, but uh, we're hoping by June uh, 4th, uh, you'll be about 60. Okay. Uh, we have a couple more minutes left because I don't want to keep uh, you all on here for too long. Um, so Kathleen is asking about filing tax taxes for next year. Um, if we've been working and need to file taxes for next year, is there a way we can file beforehand or in Malawi? Or do you recommend we someone else file for you, for you? Yeah. So um, in regards to filing taxes, uh, you all will receive your W-2s uh, in country at once you're a volunteer. Um, often not, uh, people do have like a, a power of attorney or they have their someone, you know, their parents or, or guardian um, fill out their taxes for them. Um, but you'll get more information from your director of manage, uh, director of management and operations who will walk you through that process on how to file. Um, but you do get your W-2 in country and uh, sent to you to, sent to your home of record. Okay. Uh, Alex is reading uh, said he read a blog that PCVs keep a copies keep copies of their uh, driver's license, passport, who card, debit cards birth certificate in their homes and site is that necessary so um i would not have a photocopy i i like i wouldn't suggest that you keep photocopies of your debit and credit card um i think that's just a bit too risky for um it to end up in you know just i just wouldn't i wouldn't suggest that however now copies of your passport that is something that your um post uh, staff will do for you they'll copy make a copy of your passport and perhaps keep on file but we'll, we can verify all that information when we're when we're on a call with them um and it is safe to um you can bring your personal passport with you uh some people want to do some traveling afterwards and so they do um, bring their passport you can keep your um your no fees passport as well but it does need to be returned um to uh to us so um but yeah 
I don't think it's necessary to have copies of your birth certificate. Definitely, I think you would want to just, if that's something you use to, to uh, apply for your no-fees passport, uh, we will be hand handing that back out to you um, at staging. So I would suggest that you bring, you all bring like envelopes and stamps to um, to have on hand to mail back those items back to your parents because uh, you wouldn't want to take your birth certificate there and then it gets water damaged or mildew dam, you know, some kind of damage happens to it and you know you don't have one anymore so i would suggest to send that back um ben is asking about oh, i'm sorry alex um Yes, um, Alex, you, yeah, so we'll cover the cost of two um, bags. Each of them will um, can hold about 50 pounds each. Um, so, and no, that's a good question about can one be 60 and one be 40. You'll have to, um, we'll give you baggage um, guidelines with the staging instructions that we'll send 30 days, days prior to staging. But um, once you find out what airline um, you're gonna, you all are going to be on, which is probably South African Airways, definitely I like to encourage you all to go onto the website and look at what their guidelines are. Um, that way you don't run into problems when you get in, when you check in. Um, so, but when you are flying to staging, um, typically the domestic flights only allow for one check bag, right? So you will have to pay for your second check bag, and I'll give you some more information when you get to staging. But with that second bag, you're, um, you'll get reimbursed when you get in country, okay? All right, you all, I have um, about three or four minutes left, um, and because I, I don't want to keep you all on here. I know some of you are all actually on your lunch break and things of that nature, so um, do not want to keep you all too long on here. But give me one second. Let me run through some of the questions. Um, internet access, um, it depends on what's uh, where you are in the country. It may be really good for some uh, for some people, and it may be a little spotty depending on where you are in the country. Um, so yeah. Um, Alex, um, so the in regards to uh, Alex Gaber, there's two Alexes. Um, so in regards to what can be found in country, let's save that question for the volunteers that we're going to be talking to in the next couple of weeks. I think they're going to be able to give you a better idea of what's in country and what you can, you know, can or cannot get. So we'll leave that for them, okay? Um, Okay, yeah, Alex, you have a really uh, uh, Deos, you have a really good question about staging and, and per diem. So when you, um, one thing I can actually put out there, so when you get access to your onboarding t um, portal, please ensure that you complete all the tasks as soon as possible, okay? Because um, at seven days prior to staging, uh, you will be sent um, an EFT, electric electronically sent um, your per diem for staging, okay? If you do not complete your um, your staging items uh, task before that, then you won't you won't get the money before traveling to staging. You only you'll get it up. Upon arrival so I want to definitely put that out there and make sure as soon as you have access to your onboarding portal and I'll send out reminders ensure that you um, complete that early so that you can get your EFT for per diem it's going to be a hundred around a hundred and twenty dollars twenty two dollars but it depends it, it changes so you'll know, you'll know that information closer to time okay all right um, so I'm going to wrap it up here. You all have really great questions, but I know we're going to have another opportunity to, you know, uh, have a QA. and a So um, let us, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'll answer one more question. Celine's. I'll answer Celine's question. So about uh, what are the dates and times for future conference calls like this? So I will send out a, um, an email just like I did um, a couple weeks ago notifying you that in two weeks or a week or a time we'll have a conference call with your country director or your program um, managers. Um, and then it probably will be via Skype because that seems to be the most dependable way that, at least with, with contacting with posts, um, it seems to work very well. So um, I can't give you hard dates right now, but we will have um, a couple We'll definitely have at least two to three calls prior to your departure in June. Okay. All right. Um, 
So thank you so much for taking the time in your busy day, I know, to join um, this call. I will send out the PowerPoint and, and the recording of this, or actually I'll just send out the recording because you'll see the PowerPoint um, in it. And if you have any questions, and if I didn't get to your question, I'm so sorry, feel free to send me an email at malawi at and I'll reach out to you. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, and welcome to Peace Corps Malawi. Uh, and I'm really excited for all of you. And again, um, thank you again. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a great one. Thanks. Bye. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day today. Bye. 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 Bye.